it's Reagan, and I'm coming at you in my summeriest, fruitiest shirt to talk about my most anticipated upcoming summer book releases. Now, I did one of these at the beginning of the year, which I'll leave linked down below, but that was kind of encompassing all of the year. And honestly, there are so many books that come out every single season that I kind of wanted to narrow the focus a bit and focus on some of the ones coming out this summer because there are so many that I didn't talk about in that video that are coming and you need to know. You need to know about them. First and foremost, I have to talk about A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. As you guys know, I recently read and marathon the first two books in that series. It's currently my YA fantasy obsession. It is so fantastic and I cannot wait for the third book of this series. I'm not sure if this is the final book or not. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping it's a quartet selfishly so I can read as many books um, in this series as possible. And if you guys aren't familiar, The Ember and the Ashes is a fantastic ancient Roman inspired fantasy story that's a dual perspective. One of our main characters is part of the scholar class, which is a class that has basically been conquered by the current ruling class. Our main character keeps her head down, tries to avoid um, catching the eye and the attention of the authority. She doesn't want to be arrested, she doesn't want to be beaten all of those things. And then one day her brother is arrested for treason and she basically becomes a spy to set him free. We also follow our main character Elias who's part of this elite military school and he's training to basically be the enforcer of this land. However, he hates it. People's lives cross paths. It's so good. The magic is kind of like a slow burning element of the story. It's there and it slowly creeps up and becomes more present throughout both novels. The characters have so much history and so much and so many obstacles to go through. This is not a romance first fantasy story, there is romance, but to me it feels more like character first um, story. I mean, just reading their perspectives can be harrowing, heartbreaking, but also full of joy and hope. It's such a great series, can't wait for the third book to come out. The next book that I'm super excited to come out, I actually have an arc of, which I'm pumped about, and that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, and this comes out June 18th, and it's the second book to My Lady Jane. It's a book within this world and this series. I read My Lady Jane last year, and it's so much fun. It's like a historical fiction fantasy style novel. It has a lot of humor. It has a lot of uh, narrative interjection. Basically our narrator is telling the story and it's like telling jokes throughout the story. It's a bunch of fun. It's definitely lighthearted and kind of on the lighter end of fantasy, which I personally like. To me it's like my contemporary. You know what I mean? It's like contemporary fun fantasy. It's like not super dark. It has really cool animal magic and it's just super quirky. So I can't wait to read the next book in the series. And the blurb says, the authors of My Lady Jane are back with a fantastic, romantic, hilarious, and entirely, but not really, faithful retelling of Jane Eyre. Which, if you also didn't know this about me, Jane Eyre is my favorite classic of all time. Hello, Mr. Rochester. <laughs> this book I'm really excited about is Wild Blue Wonder, and this comes out June 26th. And this kind of sounds like a magical realism contemporary fantasy story. It's set in a camp, and this camp is always thought to be magical. Blueberries can grow in the middle of winter, apparently a sea monster that lives in the lake. And this camp is owned by Quinn and her family, and Quinn basically has grown up loving this camp, living on this camp, and one day she falls in love with her best friend Dylan but then something goes wrong. And then from there, a new boy moves into town named Alexander and she kind of starts a romance with him. She begins to understand the truth about magic and monsters, both real and imaginary. The summer is a little vague, but I do really love the concept of this summer camp and this magical, mystical place in upstate Maine. And also a young girl kind of coming into her own in a coming of age story. Magical realism coming age stories are some of my favorites and I always really enjoy them. Like the Strange and Beautiful Stars of Avery Lavender and those types of books I love, so I really feel like this is going to be right up my alley. Next up we have a dark fantasy and that is Sea Witch and this comes out July 31st I want to say. Yes, July 31st. And this feels like a Little Mermaid retelling but super super dark and I'm currently reading a, a really dark Little Mermaid retelling and really liking it so like I'm here for another one. And this is the blurb that caught me because I feel like I always love this triangle of three friends or three sisters and some sort of curse and some sort of dark thing that happened in the past and now no one really knows what's happened since. Um, something like this kind of happens in Three Dark Crowns. It's just a trope that I always really, really love. But this is the blurb that sold me. Everyone knows what happens in the end. A mermaid, a prince, a true love's kiss, 
Before that, A Young Siren's Tale, there were three friends. One feared, one royal, and one already dead. And that just sounds so dark and mysterious, and it's set in the sea, and I feel like sea fantasy, I feel like it's kind of trending right now. Like, not pirates, but like mermaids. And I am here for it. Next book I'm really pumped about, and I actually heard about it on Monica's channel, and I quickly added it to my list, and it's called Scream All Night. And this is apparently like a laugh out loud, funny horror, novel, which I normally am not about horror, but this just sounds so humorous that I feel like it's gonna be such a great time. This follows our main character, Dario, whose father is like a very well-known horror movie director. At a young age, Dario decided to emancipate himself from his father and his family, and he's never really seeing himself ever going back to this castle that where all of the films are made and where all the cast and his family stays. However, his brother one day invites him home for kind of one last hurrah, and his and Dario says, this is my last time I'm going back, but he kind of gets sucked back into the twisted world of this castle called Moldova, and he's trying to basically start saving his father's studio that's losing money. He says, Dario must confront the demons of his past and the uncertainties of his future, but can he escape the place that's haunted him his whole life? I don't know, I really think the horror movie setting of this novel is a really unique one and has very much intrigued me. Again, I don't like scary movies, but I do think it's kind of funny that it's set in kind of like a film set, and that element really does intrigue me. The next book I'm gonna talk about is another book I'm lucky to have an arc already, and that is Never World Wake by Marisha Pestle. This comes out in June as well, and Marisha Pestle is one of my favorite adult authors, and she wrote Night Film, which is one of the most harrowing novels I've ever read, and this is her YA debut, and honestly sounds in freaking credible, and I don't know many other people talking about this book, and people need to be talking about this book. It basically follows a circle of cool kids, and they're very tight, they ran their private boarding school, they're rich, they're beautiful, they're popular, but then one day, one of the six dies, and this kind of causes the rest of the friend group to kind of fall apart and they all kind of scatter their own way. But then one night they all kind of reunite in this house in hopes of kind of bringing their friendship together and maybe answering some of the unknown questions about their friend's mysterious death. So they're all in this house, they're having this night, and then a mysterious knock happens at the door. And they answer the door and they're basically told that they are currently existing in what is called a Never World Wake. Never World Wake is basically the impossible. It's a snag in the time complex that people live in. And the only way to escape the Never World Wake is for the five friends to decide the one person who will continue living on and the rest have to die. This book sounds dark, twisted, and all sorts of messed up, and I'm here for it. And from how the author has kind of described it, it's a short novel that packs like a very fast and short punch. Meaning like I think the whole thing is like high intensity and you're just waiting to see what's gonna happen next I'm pumped about this book. The next book that I'm really excited about that's coming out is The Truth Lies Here The book actually comes out August 21st so a little more towards the tail end of summer This honestly sounds like the quirkiest weirdest it also very dark murder mystery, or rather just mystery, and that's kind of what sold it to me. And this is set in a small town in Michigan, and we follow our main character, Penny, who's an aspiring journalist. And she teams up with the quirky boy next door and the town star quarterback to solve the mystery of her missing father. And her father is a well-known conspiracy theorist, and she actually thinks his disappearance is tied to these mysteries he's so obsessed with. And when townspeople start showing up dead in the woods, and she starts seeing men running around in black suits around the town, things start to get even crazier. This kind of gives me like a little bit of Stranger Things vibes, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping it's kind of this like weird, quirky, ragtag team of individuals trying to save the day on this weird, theory and mystery. I don't know, it just sounds like it could be a lot of fun and I'm very excited to read it. And the very last book I'm gonna talk about is definitely one that, oh my gosh, it's so exciting. And that is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. And this book comes out, I believe, late August. Yes, August 28th. Obviously no secret that I love everything Victoria Schwab basically writes and releases. And books are always gonna be the top of my list, but this one sounds especially compelling. And this follows our main character, Cassidy, whose parents 
parents are inspectors, which means that they are ghost hunters and they're not very good at it. But the thing is about Cassidy is she can actually see ghosts. And when her parents score a new ghost hunting location for their television show, they bring Cass along to this very haunted Edinburgh mansion. And there she meets a lot of ghosts, some friendly and some not. This is a story about Cassidy basically brought into a fight between the living and the dead, and she's having to use her powers to save herself and her world. This just sounds like deliciously dark, right up my street, and very Victoria Schwab. I absolutely love her settings, her stories, her characters, and especially when they have a dark twist to them and I feel like this is that. It just sounds so good and obviously a part of my list. Alrighty guys, those are my most anticipated upcoming summer releases. Let me know down below some books you're really excited to read this summer as I would love to know. And I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!